What's up guys, in this video I want to show you how to find the endpoint when given one midpoint as well as the other endpoint. Okay, so it looks like there's a lot of writing, but basically what we have here is we have a point C and we have a point M and we're trying to find the other midpoint. And again, the best advice that I like to give to students is just to plot the information, right? When you're trying to like conceptually understand what's going on, you have corner points and just plot the coordinate points. Like it's not like they're hard to go and graph. So it's important that we understand exactly what we have here, right? So we have this point C, we have M, which represents the midpoint, right? So that means that's the middle, horizontally and vertically, of this other point D that we're trying to find. Now, if I was just to kind of like connect these, all right, and I was just to kind of do some estimation, right, then I would say like, all right, I don't know, roughly right around here, that's where we're gonna be looking for D. Now, what's something that's kind of important, or what's something I think like I can take away from this um, that I could use? Well, one thing I would say, and this is a great way to like check your answer. This is a great like way to kind of foreshadow this if you're taking a test or a quiz. I know in this coordinate or in this third quadrant, negative x and negative y is my answer. So if I don't have a negative for my x and my y, I know I did something wrong, right? Because it doesn't make sense for your endpoint to be over here, right? Over here, over here. It has to be down in this third quadrant. All right. So what do we know about these values? Now, I don't want to confuse you here with these negative x and negative y. We're still going to treat this. We just know these values need to be negative. And actually, let me just kind of maybe do this. We know the value, oh, sorry. We know the values are going to be negative. So I'm just going to kind of do that because I want you to understand this, that I don't know what these values are. So I don't want to put the negatives here because for the formula that we're going to use, that's not going to be helpful. So I'm just going to use an x, y, all right? Now, even further than that, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to call these x3 and y3. Because if you remember in the traditional like midpoint formula, we use x1 and x2 as those two coordinate points. We are gonna use these as x2, sorry. Because the coordinate points, if you remember, was always going to be a x2 and a x3, the two, there we go. Now the midpoint though, we're gonna call these an x3 and a y3. And we'll call this an x1 and a y1, okay? So remember, midpoint formula, right? What was the midpoint formula? Well, if you remember, the midpoint formula was simply, you know, x1 plus x2 divided by 2, and then a y1 plus a y2 divided by 2, right? Now, again, what those gave us was our midpoint, which I'm going to call x3 comma y3. Now, why would I call them that? Why would I do that? Well, the reason why I would do that, guys, is because I want you to understand this. If we were to kind of like write an equation here, I can say x1 plus x2 divided by 2 equals an x3. I can also say y1 plus a y2 divided by 2 gives us a y3, right? All right, so now we need to understand, well, what is the information that we have and what is the information that we don't have? So if we look at this original problem or the original information we have, we say, all right, do I have an x1? Yes, that's 2. Do I have a y, an x2? No, I don't know what the x2 is, right? So it's going to be plus an x2 divided by 2, and that equals x3. Do I know what x3 is? Yes, I do. That's a negative 1. Okay? Now, how can I go ahead and you know, solve from here? So again, remember, when you're dividing by 2, if you want to undo dividing by 2, you just need to multiply by 2 as well. Now, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to put everything in parentheses here. So therefore, you can see that those are going to multiply out, and then you multiply by 2 over here. Then what you're now going to have is a 2 plus a x2 equals a negative 2. Now, I can subtract the 2 on both sides, and I get a x2 is equal to a negative 4. I right, wasn't really planning on using that much space, but we'll do this again. Now let's do the y. So do we have a y1? We do have y1. That's going to be a 7 plus y2, which we do not have, right? The y2 is our unknown. That is going to be our second point. So it's going to be plus a y2 divided by 2 equals a y3, which we do know what y3 is. That's going to be a negative 1. So again, I'm going to go ahead and multiply by 2 on both sides. Use parentheses because you're multiplying everything by 2, right? And you can even do the parentheses over here if you want to. But these now are going to divide out. Multiply by 2 over here. So therefore, you get a 7 plus a y2 is equal to a negative 2. And then subtract the 7, subtract the 7. y2 is equal to a negative 9. So therefore, the other endpoint is now going to be a negative 4, negative 9. Which, if you remember, was supposed to be in the third quadrant. Is this coordinate point? Negative 4 comma negative 9, is that going to be in the fourth quadrant? Yes, it is. Let me just go ahead and scratch this up real quick. There you go. You can see, does that look like I did a pretty good job? I mean, I had to erase my original graph, but you guys can see, like, I think that's a pretty good job.
So thankfully, we can rely, we can use this graph to make sure that we're getting our answer correct. But in the next video, we'll go ahead and explore to visually verify our answer using the graphical approach. But what about when we can't verify the midpoint using the graphical approach? That will come up in the next video.